So I am going to tell you everything that I'm going to say probably over the next 30, 40 minutes up front. That's my promise. My PowerPoint is a total of two slides, right? So I'm not attempting to give you what I think is too much information. And then I have one worksheet that's really not necessarily a worksheet. It's a opportunity for us to have a conversation as I go. Does that sound fair? So it's gonna be really an opportunity for you to interrupt me, to ask questions, to ask me to slow down if necessarily, if needed. Sometimes I can talk a bit fast, so I'll try to keep that in mind. Um, but even before I show the slides, I'm gonna tell you what I know. So here's my core belief. There is a difference between caring for your passion and caring for a business. And I think that both are important, but they're not the same. So if you are into agriculture, and if you are into sustainability and protecting the land, and not necessarily interested in earning income to cover your costs to do that, that's excellent. In fact, it's beautiful, but it's not a business. If you are interested in caring for the land and working in agriculture and earning income to cover or exceed your expenses, that's what I'm gonna focus on tonight, okay? Because that's what I know. I don't necessarily know the passion part. I'm sure each of you are passionate in some form or fashion about agriculture and producing nutrients for people like myself, but there is a real business aspect to your passion. And so I'm just gonna give it all the way up front. You cannot have a business if you do not market, brand, advertise, or promote, period, full stop. If you do not take the time to market, brand, advertise, or promote, you will accelerate your path back to only having a passion. Full stop. And that's okay. But just know that you putting a lot of time, energy, sweat equity, your love into the soil to produce something, but if you don't put a comparable amount of energy into marketing, branding, advertising, and promoting, you will only cultivate a passion you will not cultivate a, a business. It is fundamentally impossible. I don't necessarily talk hyperbolically. I'm not prone to exaggeration. That is a fact. There is a difference between these two things. So now let's have some fun. That's it. That's all I'm gonna reiterate over and over again tonight. That is the secret sauce. So if you wrote any of that down, you have my whole presentation. I have a little bit more context to share, but if you are about having a business, you are going to have to say to myself, self, I am going to commit to consistently market, brand, advertise, and promote my business. That is it. That is all I'm gonna share with you tonight. I'll talk a little bit about what that might look like for each of you and how to do it in a very, what we would consider foundational way. But those are the things that you will need to fully embrace, that you will need to wake up every morning and understand that as much as you might be tired, fatigued, overwhelmed with the responsibilities of being a small business owner, it is ultimately your responsibility to curate around those four bodies of work. Okay, so I'm just gonna provide a handout. Okay, so again, we're gonna be efficient. It is one sheet of paper. Isn't that exciting? Not a whole lot for you to lose, even if you toss this in the back of your seat of your car when you get in it. <laughs> I believe you are gonna have retained 
50% of what's on this sheet, okay? Like again, there is not a lot to this but to do this, all right? So even if you lose this sheet, there is no problem here because what we're going to talk about, I think is going to make so much sense. It's going to be so clear, you are going to internalize it immediately that you can lose the sheet. All right, so up here my title is marketing, branding, advertising, promotions, dot, dot, dot. It matters, okay? That's kind of the thing. It really does matter. All right, so we're gonna do a little can you identify these extremely common brands exercise? And again, I don't need to call on anybody, but someone shout out, what is, uh, of the logos that are up here, one that is recognizable? Apple. Apple, Apple. excellent. Facebook. Starbucks. Starbucks. Target. 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 Instagram. 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 One more. I didn't know the R. <laughs> Basket Robin! Are you from here or do we got a hometown boy? Just an ice cream junkie. Uh, <laughs> an ice cream uh, protege. Okay, so that's really it. So I guess basically it says it takes the life of a business, right, in order for that level of recognition and likely what some of you felt was either some type of opinion or feeling about any one of these brands, right? Who has a feeling about Facebook? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, let's keep it clean. Who wants, who wants to share a positive, <laughs> a positive opinion about Facebook? Communication. Communication. And, and what about the communication through Facebook does it provide? I can find out what my neighbors are doing, or I can find out what the events are doing. Okay, excellent. Is that easy or hard? It's very easy. Very easy. And your name? Jenny. Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. All right, so who would agree, just by a show of hands, that using Facebook is pretty easy? You can connect with people you know and complete strangers. Right? Okay, excellent. What about Target? Somebody give me something you felt when you, or feel when you think about Target and their brand. Back in the room. Um, I think shopping is what I think about. Okay. You think about shopping? Yeah, and like essentials. Essentials, okay. Does anybody have a thought about the experience when you're shopping at Target? If you've shopped at Target, is it cumbersome, clutter? It's a vacation place for a lot of mothers like me. Day night. Did you equate it to <laughs> you equated it to vacation? Yes. So I don't know if I've ever heard that before. Okay, so that's a new one for me. Say so thank you very much. And your name again? It's Naima. Naima. Thank you, Naima. So Naima is saying, listen, Target is an escape. Especially at the right time of day, kids ain't in tow. I might actually book a little Airbnb there in the aisle over in Health and Beauty. I would not advise that, but I'm hearing what you're saying. All right, so what do we think about Apple? Anybody has an iPhone? All right, so what feeling comes to mind when we think about Apple? Resentment? <laughs> I'd just say familiar. I don't know if that's a feeling, but like, just, yeah. yeah, like that's part of, it is, it's part of my day to day. Okay, so it's a part of your day to day, which is actually a lot deeper than just familiar. Yeah. Okay. What I feel, no, what I feel is I, when I see it, or is it corny products, corny devices, corny technology, so when I see the Apple, because they have very brand name and, and, and very quality standard brand name, and when I see Apple, I say that's a good brand. You think so, it's a good yeah, brand? A reliable brand. Reliable. Yeah. Okay, so excellent. What's your name? Waku. Waku. And Kate. Kate, thank you. Thank you both. So listen, how many of us, even in our personal lives, like to believe we are seen as reliable. Is that a positive attribute or not a so good attribute to be thought of? Do we want to be known as reliable? Right, and so we all know what sometimes positive emotions that we want to convey about ourselves personally. And we've just shared a couple of positive emotions about brands that 
just naturally came up given our experiences with some of them. Do we think it's easy to get a brand, right, even a logo, quite frankly, a piece of the brand to convey a feeling? Is that easy or difficult? It's not too easy and it's not too difficult. It's but, not too easy, it's not too difficult. But you have to develop your credential and then what you have behind the logo it could be quality or service, quality artwork, quality of product to stand behind your, your just logo, like you have to do something to stand behind that credential or whatever behind your brand logo. Okay, so you have to uh, develop maybe a track record? That's right. That's Credentials? Right. Do we agree with that? That it can take time to be seen a certain way? Does it take a lot to turn people off? Do you go back to a restaurant for poor service over and over again because it excites you? That you want to see just how bad they can do it the second time, the third time? Like you just wake up, I hope they disappoint me. I hope they give me somebody else's food. You know what I mean? Like who does that? No one, right? So it doesn't take a lot to create a bad memory or a poor experience, but it does take time, generally, to build positive ones, okay? And so now we're gonna kinda just leave these images up here because that just needs to hang in our mind through the rest of the conversation, and we're gonna go to our little sheet. Again, there's no magic on this sheet. I'm gonna ask some of you to help me to read what I have here, but this is gonna be conversational. So I am trying to, again, just tell you all the truth. I want to persuade, convince, cajole. If I had the money to bribe each of you, I would, that you believe that these eight key things about a small business are right, okay? So this is my point of view. I simply say that to say I have a point of view and I typically try to show up believing in my point of view, but that doesn't mean my point of view is perfect or right but I am gonna talk like it is almost gospel, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's what my role is here tonight. So I believe that there are eight basically fundamental things to keep in mind when it comes to a small business in the context of marketing, branding, advertising, and promotions, okay? I really do. And the first one is simply, I'm gonna read the bold and I'm gonna ask for some help. So talking about your business is the only way to have a business. And can you tell me your name? Jesse. Jesse. Jesse, can you read what I have below that? Sure. Not taking time to think about what you know and believe about your business will make it impossible for you to tell others about your business. Do you know what I mean by that? Like if you don't even take the time to think about your business, or to think about what you will tell other people about your business. How in the world will people know? Can you do that? To the best of my knowledge, we've not yet demonstrated or proven that you can learn through osmosis, right? That telekinesis is not yet a thing that we've mastered. And so if there is something that you believe, much like these eight principles that I've outlined, the only way for you to know what I believe is for me to tell you, right? That's the only way for you to know what I believe. It's a starting point. It is foundational and essential. And so you don't want to just tell people anything. Right? Like, so I think that I feel pretty good about what's on this paper, but when you're thinking about your business, I want each of you right now on this sheet, you don't have to say anything out loud if you don't want to, but think about what you know and what you believe about the business that you have or that you are aspiring to have and put down two or three words that you believe about your business. Do you think that your business is bold? Do you think that your business is creative? Do you think that your approach to your business is unique? What do you believe about your business?
All right, do I have anyone who wants to share something that you've written down about your business? Anything? Naima. You put community and awareness. Mm -hmm. That's what you believe about your business? Right. Okay, so can I just uh, unpack that a little bit? Is it that you believe that your business is about or serves community? Serves community, brings awareness. Brings awareness to? To agriculture. Excellent. So I'm hearing Naima say that she believes and knows that her business serves a higher purpose than just the products it produces. She talked about awareness within her community and the importance of healthy food, right, and how to produce healthy food. But understanding that and knowing that is the first part of this point. If she didn't know that or understand that, she would not be able to tell anyone else. Lo que escribí yo, what I wrote here, es este, la producción de alimentos enfocado en tres ejes, social, ambiental y económico. Is that I think about my business as producing food based on three things. In, what, in taking care of the environment, Taking care of the social or community and taking care of the income, economics, three things. Social, community, economics? Yes. Environment, social. Environment. environment social, and economics. Thank you. Environment, social, and economics. Excellent. And if, in your name? Producing foods that are quality food. Excellent. And your name? Jose. Jose. Listen, Jose has a lot to say about his business. <laughs> okay? Which is a great example of having a good starting point of wanting to be in business that you have something to say. You know, he wants to jump out of his seat and just share it all. He's like, listen, I'm about the environment, I'm about the social impact, and I'm about that money. And in that order, you know? And I think that the importance of that is understanding that once you begin to synthesize, to analyze what you believe your business is about, is don't stop with just talking about the one thing. The challenge and the opportunity will be to have communication materials that expresses exactly what Jose said, in their entirety so that people really understand who you are. We will talk about the importance of that a little bit in down the road in this, in this uh, worksheet, but it's about helping to begin to think about what makes you different. And if you're able to articulate, communicate, and convince people that you are about the environment, you are about social enterprise and or justice, you care about making an economic return for the effort that you're putting out into the world, then that's a story you should tell. And now that gets us to number two, but tell who? So knowing who you want and should, because those are two different things, knowing who you want and should talk to about your business is the act of marketing your business. I understand that sometimes there can be confusion about what is marketing, what is branding, what is advertising, advertising, what is promotions. Aren't they all the same? No. Simple. No, they are not. They are each very different. And the first one really encompasses them all because marketing is truly the act of understanding who do you want to talk to? Who do you want to market to? Okay, and your name? Yes, Corey? Dory. Dory, with a D? X on oh, one of my favorite characters. I'll save that for after. Okay, so Dory, do you mind reading what's below, number two? Sure. Marketing is all about understanding Okay, does 
anybody find anything in that statement like, I can't believe Tabitha, that's wrong. Okay, great. I am seeing that you guys are beginning to drink the Kool-Aid, which is my mission, in a good way, the non-harmful kind. Okay, so. That was in that thing. I was reading the that thing. Oh, you were, oh, I'm sorry. Can you mark it to everybody? Yes or no? Quick. Yes. No. <laughs> this might be a long night. Jose, Jose knew. Jose knew it was no. No, you can't mark it to everybody. Do y'all get infinite money? I don't know about because then again, I would like to talk to you and I'm a very lovely person. But again, the answer is no. Even when we're using tools like social media that reach a lot of people, as a small business owner, your resources are valuable. Your time is valuable. Your effort is valuable. Spend it wisely. And spending it wisely means that we have to do the hard work of making decisions. How many of us like to make decisions? Okay, see? This is a problem. <laughs> How many find it hard sometimes to make decisions? Okay, that's an area of opportunity for you as you work to manage your business. There is nothing wrong with understanding that the, the foundation of your business is so beautiful, much like what Jose described, that you are putting good energy and positive contributions into the world that in theory could serve everyone. That's beautiful, that's a passion statement. A business statement is that is not practical and you are not gonna reach all those people, you're gonna burn yourself out and you're gonna go out of business. There's a difference, and again, I told you, I'm not here to talk about your passion. I believe you, you're good people, you seem wonderful, you seem nice, yada, yada, yada. Okay, but if you want a strong, healthy business, be prepared to make decisions that reflect you want to stay in business. And staying in business means that you will make just choices about who can you begin to market to first. For example, if you are a part of a large church community, do you start focusing on those as potential customers? Perhaps, if you have a lot of hobbies, right? You're a part of book clubs. You're on a bowling league. You volunteer at a children's hospital. Is that your universe of influence? Are customers at a farmer's market your prospective customers? You have to decide so you can put yourself, your product, your services in the line of decision to be chosen. You can't be everywhere at once. You can't reach every person. And then I go on to surmise that you will need to work to target the right people at the right time. What do we mean by that? What do you think that we mean by that? How do we target the right people at the right time? Yep. vernacular in terms of growing season or when that's going to get going but if right now if the ground is frozen and you're not necessarily able to till the soil to sell that which will grow right 
um, in several months. This could be a good time to begin doing customer prospecting, right? Because you're gonna be busy once you get to harvesting. And then it will make it even easier to say, I don't have time for the marketing, the branding, the advertising, and the promotion. So that would be the worst time to try to put a lot of effort into cultivating new business. That's what I mean about the right people at the right time. The right time is often when you have the time and you're not so consumed with something that is essential, like taking care of the quality of the product that you want people to purchase from you. That is a thing. So even thinking about your business in an annual cycle in terms of when should you be doing what activities, you know, is a great way to prepare yourself to make sure you create a punch list every month. What should you be doing every month in order to secure the right people during the right time? And that doesn't mean all of your marketing, advertising, branding, and promotion stops when you're extremely busy. It just means you might do less, but with purpose. You might do less with purpose, but you have to do the right less. Okay, the right less might be a couple of social media posts or actually showing up at a farmer's market. Because again, that is an act of advertising to be in the room where customers are. Advertising is not just print or radio or social media. Advertising is word of mouth. Advertising is someone talking favorably about you and your products. Okay, let's go on to number three. Your brand is what makes your business unique, memorable, and sustainable. Who can I ask to read what's below that statement? And your name, sir? Dan. Dan. That's easy. Dan. Take it away. Everything about your business should help create a lasting personality that people want to know. Aspects of your brand include the name, logo, product, service quality, accessibility, location, website, employees, suppliers, consistency, convenience, availability, cleanliness, intellectual property, proprietary systems, trademarks, copyrights, processes, policies, values, mission, vision, and every other aspect of your business. Now that was meant to overwhelm you. <laughs> no, that's great. That just means that your brand is everything. And creating a memorable, right, um, sustainable and unique brand requires that for each of those components, for each of those aspects that are part of your business, to treat them like an opportunity to brand your business. And that's just simply say, take care in everything you do. Don't put a lot of energy into having um, a beautiful website and uh, the most beautiful pictures that you could afford to purchase online. And when people see you at the market, those two don't align. <laughs> they like, <laughs> That's not what I saw on your website. <laughs> That's what we call brand confusion. <laughs> okay? You really want to be thoughtful about how you present your brand at every turn because when you create confusion or a disconnect, you create an opportunity to lose a customer. And an easy one. People will begin to think that you're not trustworthy, that your product is not reliable that maybe that was last year's picture, or that you're lazy, or that you're, at the worst, uh, into fake news, you know? Like you're willing to say things that are just not true about your business. And so that's just me trying to encourage you, even if you feel as if you don't have the best pictures of your product, there are ways to tell your story. There are ways to simply say less with more. A picture of you and your family, or the pictures of you and the others that are working the soil just with a statement of belief about why you're doing what you're doing for the environment, for social and economic reasons, is powerful. Don't play to the crowd if you can't back it up. Okay, so every aspect of your business matters. Does anybody disagree with that? Do we believe in taking shortcuts in this room? No. <laughs> I'm not teasing. Okay. 
Does anybody else have another example of what goes into a brand? I, I do have some. I, I have the business name, but I start with building credentials behind the sense as what I mentioned earlier. Yep. Such as go to classes and showing my audience as well. I'm not just talking. I'm taking classes, I'm certifying over to this organization. Do a training, be a presenter, or have some certificate works from other training as well. Yep. That is something I can I can um, um, back up the what is I make sense of my branding or my, my business so and I start my, my Facebook page and start having conversation with the audience showing about what I'm doing and interacting with training and that related to what I'm going to do for my living as my business so that's that's what I create right now. I don't really have a logo but I have I have a name yet. I have a name already are you able to share or you're like you don't want people taking your name? I, I can share. Okay. Yeah. If you if you search on Facebook about community gardening group and you will see my background, about my bio, about my company, about my training, and this is under the community community gardening groups on Facebook and you will see what I started, I showed them about what I'm doing at the farm, what produce I have available, something like that. Just that's where I slowly created my brand. Excellent. I love that example because that's an example of um, knowledge being a part of your brand and being willing to be knowledgeable about practices and processes can influence the quality of what you put forward. It's not, um, it doesn't benefit you to be excited about just sticking to what you know. You know, I'm just going to stick to what I know. Being curious about how to always do things better or differently, even if you don't apply them, demonstrates the will to be adaptive. Because in each of your, the life cycles of your business, it's going to require you to adapt. So the things that you talk about now may not be what you need to talk about down the road, but still trying to stay true to your brand. It will become almost, uh, it can be a high wire act. It will be challenging at times, but certainly possible. Let's move on to number four. Paid and unpaid advertising is the only way to stay in business. Paid and unpaid advertising is the only way to stay in business. So even before we read what's below that, what do you think I'm getting at? What's your name, sir? Mahad. Mahad? Yes. What do you think, I, how are you? I see the fear in your face when I called on you, Mahat. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mahat, what do you think I, what I mean by that statement? Paid and unpaid advertising is the only way to stay in business. Okay. Uh, basically, branding is kind of what you said, right? So advertising is the way to get your product and your service, whatever you're doing, out of it into the community or whatever you are. Um, so, word of mouth. Is unpaid. Do that. Uh, any print, social media, any other method of paid advertising. That's basically what it says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how you stay in business so that people are aware of what, what you're all about. That's the word, Mahat. Aware. Awareness. So, again, I, we've talked about a lot, so I just want to simplify it a little bit. Marketing is a decision. Marketing is the decision about who should know about what you do. Branding is belief. Branding is the belief in who you are. It is defining the personality of your business. Advertising is an act. Advertising is the act of telling people of, and the right people about who you believe you are. That's why these things are different. So again, marketing is a decision. Marketing is the decision to who you want to serve, who you want to talk to. Branding is belief. Branding is belief about who you are and you're going to thread it through every aspect of your business. And advertising is an act. It is the actual act of building awareness to the people you are deciding to market to about who you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Now that's not what I wrote here, but it seems to make sense. So can I get somebody to read what's below number four? Please, thank you. Um, advertising simply involves using people, place, or communications to highlight your business to others. A client who refers you to a friend is advertising on your behalf. Ensuring your product or service can be seen by others in a physical space is also the act of advertising. And of course, running a print ad or posting on social media are both forms of advertising. Ensuring your business receives paid and unpaid advertising exposure is the only way to that's how it works. If you're not telling anyone about your business, people will forget your business and make other choices. Why in the world is Pepsi and Coca-Cola still willing to spend a million dollars, $10 million on a 30 second Super Bowl commercial? It works. Why would they do that? It works. I think that the first advertising for you is the product. That's right. No, I, I, that is exactly right. That is one thing that people will come in contact with. But your product, Jose, is not enough. You can make the most beautiful and grow the most beautiful pearl onions or the most delicious or fragrant garlic. That's not enough. See? The product without action, without putting it in the path of someone understanding how beautiful it is, is simply beautiful product. It has, it has to leave your farm. People have to become aware that you're doing these beautiful things. So it is a tool. Your product is certainly a tool in how you advertise. But the product alone, without putting it in the path of being seen is simply beautiful product. I got a lot of beautiful and so, so nice things in my house and nobody see them. Right, you guys would have to take my word for it. You could come over and be like, no, you, you don't have a lot of nice things at all, <laughs> right? But I can tell you that because I don't have to back it up. Right, because I'm not trying to earn income from you believing that I have nice stuff. But if you tell someone, oh, you gotta check out my cucumbers, they are the most delicious, they are the most succulent, they are the fill in the blank. People are expecting you to be able to deliver that. Right, so that's part of the trick. And not necessarily trick, that's the work. Is to know what you have, communicate honestly, and understand who you need to communicate honestly to frequently. Okay, let's go on over to the back. Can I just get a time check? Like, should I be? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Let me sit up. <laughs> okay. So on to number five. <laughs> Promotions are more about sharing something exciting about your business and not discounting your business. Okay? Sometimes people can believe that, oh, Black Friday, it's all about the discounts and no full price retailer could possibly make money on this almost national holiday after Thanksgiving where we're all so focused on buy, buy, buy. But there is truly the art of promoting is promoting something that people want to hear. Not because you're giving something away. Okay, so I'm gonna just get play, just provide a little of an example. So sometimes you'll see at markets, at the end of the market, people are trying to just give it away. They are saying, or two for one, you go into, I just wanna clear the inventory mode. I'm just willing to do anything, right? That can work. Think about what would be more exciting, right? What would be more exciting to build loyalty and interest in your business if you believe in your social impact is to say setting out baskets or um, canvas bags and saying, hey, we're filling these bags to make a donation to X, Y, and Z shelter on our way home. All we are asking is for you to donate to that effort. 
we're not giving anything away. We are donating, right, this bounty of goodness with the last hour or 30 minutes that we have, and you can help us in our effort. Do you want to donate, right, buy these two things and put it in the basket and we'll donate it? So it's not that the people get it, but then you are doing something to stand out. You are doing something to reinforce your vision, your mission, and your values, and you're not giving anything away. You are attempting to promote something of value in an exciting way. Promotions, if you do it too frequently, can go unheard. You know, we, I used to work in retail at, uh, at then Macy's and Marshall Fields, and the joke was our two-day sales became five-day sales because we were previewing that sale on Monday and trying to get people to come in all week. It's like, well, how are we turning a two-day sale into a five-day sale? It completely got watered down because we kept feeling as if we had to cut the prices deeper and, let, and, and leave the sale up longer because it wasn't having the same lift. It wasn't having the same impact. Bad strategy, bad strategy. When you have to go deeper in discounts, you're not saying the right thing. Who can read what I have below number five? Oh, thank you, Mom. Promotion is literally just something worth telling others about. This might be telling about followers on social media, about a new product or service. It can also mean many of those who want to reach a little about an upcoming saving. Your ability to effectively utilize either utilize bond, not overusing either. Okay? I mean, it, it can literally be about how you are trying to educate the community about how you prepare the soil for the next season. Like, what are you doing? Like, that could be something exciting to share, just helping people understand the work and the process and sharing images of that, helping them to go along on a journey with you. Tell a story through your work. Some people, we get connected to people when we see like, oh, I know that person, or look how hard that person is working, especially when you've identified the right person to share those stories to and with. Not everybody wants to read your story. Not everybody wants to hear your story. So that's, again, when it's important to do that pre-work of understanding who are you targeting? Who are your people? Who wants to know about what you're up to? Okay? Number six. Spending time and money on marketing, branding, advertising, and promotions is not optional. But it seems like it should be, right? It feels like, you know what, like I don't got time for that. I don't got money for that. I'm just starting out. I don't have an extra ten dollars. I don't have the time. I just need to get started. I just need to get going. The problem, as I see it with that thinking, is that that is your inner monologue of passion trying to be the CEO of your business. They should never get the job, they're not qualified, they don't know what they're doing, they don't wanna see you succeed, they don't care if you up all kinds of times of the day and night, you know, and because that's what you do for passion. Right, when you are in it, there's times I've read books and I have, I've literally have convinced myself, nope, don't get up to drink or use the restroom, just finish this chapter. I'm like, what am I doing? I can come back. You know? <laughs> I'm like, I have still tried to unpack why I do that. It's the craziest thing. But, and that might be TMI, but I will say that you need to have the right mindset to be in business. And the right mindset in being in business is that everything about business matters. Do not cheat, rob any other operational functionality within how to manage a business in service of what you really get excited about. We all know that there are some things about business that we like doing more than others. Who can give me an example of that? Name something in your business or in your current process that you love to do. Or, or like a lot. Learn new things. Learn new things, okay. Well, teach what I'm learning. So you like to teach others? Oh, excellent, right? So those are two examples of really people who are probably would score very high on input from an Enneagram, on an, like a personality test. And so keep in mind 
that if you spent too much time in classes, if it's always about I gotta get one more certification, I gotta do one more train, I gotta do one more thing, you ain't gonna start a business. You're gonna be very informed. <laughs> You are going to be a very informed and possibly a very exciting cocktail party person to chat with. <laughs> and that's where it's going to start and stop. The thing about business owners is that they do. They don't always do perfect or because there is no such thing. But they, and they don't always do the most exciting and maybe they don't always do well. Business owners do. They don't just learn. They don't just talk. They don't just think about it. When it comes down to it, some of the best hustlers, makers, and entrepreneurs are people who make the decision to do. They put one foot in front of the other, and they get it done. All right, so who can read what's under number six? Thank you. Any ones of these steps here or accessory you are in a very to sustain your business, telling the right people about unique qualities of your business in a very odd way. And when you have something important to share is fundamentally the process of being in business. Yeah. Again, this is just to try to re-emphasize -em passion projects and business are different things. Both valuable, both beautiful, but very different. Number seven, making an investment in the foundational tools of marketing, branding, advertising, and promotions is invaluable. And so sometimes people say, you know, I don't have the budget for that. I don't have the time for that. You might be right, but you cannot really quantify. You cannot quantify. That's why a lot of times when you're advertising and people start talking about, well, I don't advertise because I don't know the return on that. Have two seats. <laughs> you're not serious. How many of you can raise your hand and tell me the return on the conversation you had with somebody you care about? Tell me, I'll wait. We don't talk like that. That's not a real thing. We make those statements when we're trying to excuse work we don't want to do or believe that it has to look a certain way so we won't even try. You know, that saying perfect is the enemy of the good, it's true. Nothing has to be perfect, you have to do. And the goal of talking about your business and advertising and understanding your business and understanding the right people to talk to about your business is all about being in the world. It's all about how life works if you're not a recluse. If you've not decided to shelter away on some island that no one knows about and not interact with the world at all. The active business is how the world works. You bump into things. You bump into people, you have exchange, you have moments. That's what you have to think about your business. Make your business bump into others. Please. I was I would I would share this about when you start marketing your business, if you like you feel awkward at the beginning, but if you do regularly and you feel comfortable, so kind of be excited, be part of excited, and when you share the kind of part of feeling excited and you tend to get more attention and tend to attract people. Because when I go to the mall market and I just, I, I saw they put letters under the, um, the lab, um, the beef lab, right? I just, I just simply talk about big money more letters and I'm just having a conversation later I say, I'm going um, all the letters and make them interested in her too. And you say, yes, yeah, so when Brian Springs come, maybe you have produce. They ask, no, we can buy from you. Mm -hmm. So start, start curious and about having a conversation. They don't need to go through services where you are your, your uh, products and they will be of interest. So, and, and the other day, I went to another orange store and we just talked back and forth. And later on, they just asked about how you sell your produce. And later on, maybe come into our conversation about how much you charge for They leave your, your products to your store and how much, how many percentage you charge for it. And go back and forth. 
they are pretty far from me too. It just it tends to tend like that naturally come into your second your behavior is about interacting with people. I think that that's such a great example of advertising. And a lot of us would mean never use a conversation as simply a form of advertising, but that's a perfect example of unpaid, right? Didn't cost him anything except the time to engage and to know what to say about his business and his products. Because if he's not willing to talk about it, why should anybody else be willing to talk about it? That is 101 to having a business. You should be telling everybody what you're doing so that they ask you more questions so that you perfect your story, that you perfect your narrative around what makes you unique and memorable so that you are sustainable, okay? So I don't think I had anyone read what's under number seven. Does someone want to read that book? Naima, please. And then Kate, I'm going to have you do eight, right? See, that's what we would call a marketing plan. Just having a plan of how you're going to start. And that's like less than a paragraph. I do want to call out the one thing that I, a couple things where I've, uh, in this uh, uh, overview, when I talk about the, for marketing, spend time picking at least one customer you can easily reach. Do not overlook the easily reach. I really mean that. Easily reach um, isn't necessarily, and I want to qualify, that's not just your friends and family, because they like you. They are buying from you out of a place of love, sometimes obligation. That does not sustain a business. At some point they get tired, they get a little annoyed, and they don't want to prop you up in that way. Okay, even if they don't say it, but that's not necessarily who I'm talking about easily reaching. I'm actually saying go one circle outside of your network. Build the muscle, because it is a muscle of being slightly uncomfortable with who you're talking to. Not full on awkward and now you've maybe gotten tased. I'm not trying to put you in any uncomfortable situation. But okay, we can't do that. I say Tabitha said just run up on strangers. That's not what I said. I said reasonably <laughs> uncomfortable, okay? And then the other thing I would say is here when it says ensure when it comes to your brand, you have at least a web page. I want to make sure we don't overlook that. That is not a website, okay? A website is sometimes, you know, multiple pages and has a lot of functionality and you're talking about user experience and can they easily navigate all the things on your, on your site. No, a page of information. Maybe one or two beauty shots, in and out, done, until you have either more resources and more time to add to it. But that is the start. Don't let the idea of a website prevent you from having a web page, meaning a presence on the internet. That's all we're saying. Have a presence on the internet. It is table stakes, meaning it is foundationally what you need to have for most people to believe you are in business. And do not find the most unqualified person in your life to set that up for you because people will get off your web page. You know, if it's unattractive, I promise you, within less than two seconds, people are done that we are not that gracious. If it looks homemade, we are gonna treat it like it's homemade and we're done. All right, um, and then lastly, promoting one exciting thing about your business a month. And some people may feel right now, I don't think I'm gonna have anything exciting to say. I've not yet started. You know, a lot of things that have become not just popular, but the, the truth of it is, 
when you're targeting the right people, they want to know how your story unfolds. And so take them on that journey with you, and not just the fluffy stuff. Sometimes just a real three or four sentence like moment of honesty about how hard it is will engender, will get people to feel like, man, I value that honesty, which sometimes equates to people trusting you more and being interested and excited for your next post. Okay? Can we believe it? We're almost at the end. <laughs> Getting a little emotional. All right, so number eight. And again, I've been pretty repetitive because you can lose this sheet, your dog can eat it, it can fall out on the sidewalk. I won't be offended as I'm walking in my car. It's okay. Never stop marketing, branding, advertising, and promoting your business. Never stop. And I mean that across all facets. Once you prop your website up, that's not, oh, whew, glad I did that. You post a couple of times on social media, I'm, I'm glad I'm done with that. You think you've perfected the quality of your product? Oh, I got the exact right thing and never have to touch it again. Again, that's that bad CEO who is trying to take over your business, okay? Who is about a passion project and not having a sustainable income generating operation. So Kate, can you read that last sentence? The only time you can stop investing in telling others about your business is when you are no longer in business. It's the only time you can, you can stop. That's the only way off this merry-go-round. That's the only way this thing works is that if you realize that as a business owner, established, aspiring, or somewhere in between, your energy into getting other people to care about what you're doing, to tell them about your business, is the business. That's the business. The process of getting other people to know and care about what you're doing so they decide to choose you. Building awareness, concern, and action. That's actually the business of all business. The product and the service is truly secondary. Business is not the product or service. Business, just that language, when you pull it up definitionally, is really the processes and procedures that go into managing something you care about or something that needs managing. Right, so really business, when you say business, it is those actions, it is the process. It is not the product, it is not the service. The product, the service, the, the passion for agricultural knowledge and uh, nutrition is the passion that you are trying to link to a business model, okay? And so as much as you're passionate about the product or service, you have to be equally, if not sometimes more so, passionate about the business part and I say sometimes more so because a lot of times that takes a lot more energy internally to convince yourself to do all the business stuff you know that's the part that becomes challenging is to do have all the time or energy left to do the business side so those are really the eight kind of principles I would say that I think that are fundamental to this whole idea of marketing and branding, advertising, and promotions. Each of them are different, each are essential, each are non-negotiable. Any questions? Yeah, so just, I want to make sure I'm clear, meaning are you rebranding because you want to stay in business or are you saying that you want to go out of business to focus more on your passion? Yeah. So how do you rebrand that? How do you change your model? 
Yeah. So the first thing I would say is that always understanding for you personally as the business owner, do you believe in the brand? Right, like so there's a part that I'm gonna to get to about understanding the various markets that are available to you, the various customers that are almost infinite in many instances, but understanding that you can't reach an infinite audience. But I would say the first thing that you wanna do is to check in with yourself as the business owner or leader about is this the brand right that you believe in that you want to manage like what is it that you are trying to give to the world right and if you still believe very much in the, the mission of what you are doing or were doing or aspire to do or you still believe in the values of how you operate and why you operate then you would never necessarily rebrand sometimes the word brand only gets associated with design those are two different things if you want a design refresh or a completely different design overhaul, sometimes people use shorthands and say, we rebranded. But again, if you buy into what I'm suggesting, brand is encompassing of every facet, right, of your business. So the first one is to determine whether or not you believe essentially in the core of what your business does and provides. If the answer is yes, then that can sometimes become a fairly easy next step is beginning to think about your next new customer or target group in terms of who you also think would believe and buy into what you're selling. And then some of that means as a, how do I do that, Tabitha? Think about other businesses, right, that are competitors and think about the types of customers that they attract, think about where they advertise so you can see who they're targeting. Who are they messaging to? Look at their, like them on social media, follow them, so you can get a sense of who they're saying, so you almost can back into the profile of who they're trying to attract. You know, sometimes a very seasoned, or if you're trying to reach uh, persons who might be what they would call baby boomers who are at retirement or near retirement, chances are uh, there's not gonna be a lot of post talking about Cardi B, right? Like they may just not even know who that is, you know what I mean? Like that's just not on the radar. So it's some of it's really about understanding who do you still believe yourself to be or know yourself to be as the company and then identifying a new target group or several new target groups. I, for the purposes of this class, I've tried to just kind of like simplify the logic. Generally, you're always gonna have more than one customer, but the point is to really not try to overwhelm yourself with trying to reach maybe the five different groups or the 10 different groups that you could reach. The point here is to start somewhere and do it well and be thoughtful about how you're trying to put your product or service in the path of decision. Meaning how are those prospective customers are even going to choose you if they don't know about you? That's what I would say. Thank you. Yeah. I can ask one more. Of course. Um, two, you mentioned um, knowing Yeah. I want to know, like, how do I do better to reach out to those folks? Yeah. So you're saying that they don't want necessarily the product, but they believe in the mission? Yeah. I Listen, create a membership pack. I mean, and this is just not intended to say, hey, it's easy as this, just do this. Part of it is if people are wanting to give you money and they don't even really want the product in exchange, then there are something to be said for helping people to buy into from a be a sustaining supporter of this movement of what we're trying to do if one of the anchors or pillars is educating your community, right? Like help us to make sure that more people in our community better understand the importance of healthy nutrition and that's, I have these different membership levels, but again, that takes the time to figure out, well then what comes with the membership, right? What are they getting? Are you going to produce a quarter new, quarterly newsletter of stories in terms of how your business has affected or impacted people in the community? Are they going to be able to tour the farm on a quarterly basis or in the summer? Or are they going to get 
a, a package or just a deliver it to them almost like hello fresh but just a, 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 a to your front door CSA just to kind of do a sampler of all that goodness you know or that you figure out or coordinate maybe it's a pickup but that box is available to here here if that's a thing if they want it so some of it is that idea of how do you build in value to your business but that doesn't make you become focused on something that's other than your business. I'm, I'm not trying to encourage anybody to become soap makers, right, in terms of creating a whole new division just to get either income or to get supporters. It really should be adjacent to your mission in terms of how you might get other people to support the business itself. But great question. So listen. I just would like to share about if you really want to improve the self presentations or self skill, I would recommend listen to uh, Victor Antonio podcast on YouTube. They will enhance you how to do how to deal with customer, how to approach customer, how to present or give information to other business presentation. That is very awesome. It's only two minutes per per uh, trip, so it's very helpful. He talked about all the type of business products, services, so if you keep listening, I think you will get there and we're going to be at sales. Just share. I'm listening and I'm interested in something from it. Say the name again. Richard. Richard Antonio. 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 This guy. D I C T O R A N T O and I will return and take This is a great guy, great self-person. Thank you. 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 And if, you know, if there's any other tips, I'm sure, I would, I'm sure your classmates would appreciate them. But that's what this is really about. Build a great co business community. Again, I, my, I, all of these ideas are not right or perfect, but they're mine. Again, and so the goal is just to sometimes deliver things with some level of conviction. It's been my pleasure. I think that this is exciting. Congratulations on all of your efforts, all of your learning. I hope all of your businesses thrive.
stood out a little bit more than other farmers because it's like, whoa, there's a
Beautiful. Awesome. So I now I'm going to introduce our second speaker. Um, Naima Dory is here, who has been farming with Minnesota Food Association for the last three years. And um, she has done a really great job of building up an awesome social media presence. And also, um, I've relied on you to do some promotions and like outreach, I guess, in, in the community. So I just feel like Naima has done a really good job of making a name for her farm, Naima's farm. And we asked her to come and talk about how she did it tonight. So welcome, Naima. Yeah. How long I have, but she can change as much as I think she had a little early. Oh, okay. About 45 minutes. Yeah, so um, I think Tabitha did an amazing job addressing, you know, your the passion in the business. Um, for me, you know, I, I think you gotta hit hard on the passion. So that's what really truly sells your business. And so one of the ways that I was able to do it is um, sharing my story and how we got into uh, the farming. So it's myself, my husband, and my two little boys. They're t uh, 10 and eight now. Um, and so basically we, we literally like, were growing microgreens in our <laughs> master bathroom, which we realized after some time that's not the best method of growing food. Um, so then we you know, did a lot of community garden and then somehow we end up coming to Big, Big River Farms and started our program and just, you know, build our farming um, business. So, and by the way, we just um, recently established our LLC, name is Farm, because I'm dominated by males at home, so I figured, let me stamp my name on this business and just tell the boys at home who's the real boss. <laughs> so, yay for me, and um, so it's name is Farm LLC. And you know, the whole social media stuff I'm a very private person, so it was kind of like I had to give a little bit, so I try to post here and there a little bit about my family and, and what we do, but majority of the time, it's just me connecting with my community. Um, when I say my community, I mean everyone, but more importantly, like my Somali community, you know? And so, and basically what I do is just kind of connect with folks that are interested in farming or just learning ways to access quality food and where to go and, you know, way for me to sell my pro produce over the years. And, um, but yeah, I know, I think it's really important that you sell your story. So how did you get in, where you want to go? People are interested in that and just be authentic, you know? I'm a very awkward human being at times, you know? <laughs> But you know, I think when people connect with you in a very like authentic way, then you're able to not only, you know, have your audience grow over the years, but people will stay and commit to you. You know, um, but it's also important to maintain your social media. Like I believe it's eight. I don't know. One of the list said post one posting each month because you know we're all on social media. Everybody's like. You know, so it's like, what, what are you doing? So if you're not doing anything monthly, and you're not checking in with your audience, then they kind of, you know, drip off and go somewhere else. Um, what really helped me the most, Laura, was, and I think this is a um, conversation that I had with a lot of people, is that, you know, I, I look a certain way. I'm, I'm from Africa, right? And like, I'm farming in Minnesota in this condition, right? So I, I stood out, you know? It's like, <laughs> what in the world this Somali, Muslim, whoa, she's not wearing hijab, but she's farming in St. Croix. This is crazy, we need to, you know, so I, I was able to, you know, connect with my Somali community and like so many other people. And I think it's a beautiful thing because now we get together, we create this amazing dishes. Um, I learned about Swiss chard. I had no idea what in the world that was, but I was growing apparently one of the best chart at Big River. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> And so, you know, um, I was able to learn a lot of amazing food that I was never accustomed to and, you know, and so, and I'm still learning and, and you know, I connected with so many people in Minneapolis, like communities that I would never reach out to just because of food, you know, it's amazing like what food does. And so, yeah, I mean, I really, I'm not, you know, professionally, like Tabitha obviously is very skilled and is able to guide you and tell you like the do's and the don'ts. For me, it's like, this is what I did, you know, certain posts 
stay away from politics because I don't know anything about politics. So just I think what really complicates things as a farmer is like if you really get into farm, you know politics, it just kind of takes you a different. So I try to stay away from like people tagging me certain things, uh, people telling me, hey, you know, you're very active. Could you share this stuff? So I try to find a, a balance with all of the other stuff. And so social media could either hurt you or whew, take you somewhere else. So for me, I try to separate my personal and my business. Um, so I try to maintain a very professional, I delete things that I'm not satisfied with people commenting. And so I just keep on moving. I have full control and you know, it's just, a space for me to share what I know and just keep it real and and just share a little bit of where I want to go yeah. and so some other tools because you're, we're farmers we don't have money right so <laughs> please utilize the younger generation because they're tech savvy they're up to date with the latest apps you don't have to pay a dime you know so utilize that so if you have a high schooler or you know high schooler or a college student get them on board, maybe give them an incentive, you know, um, but they're very, very, really, really skilled in uh, the social media, so they can maintain that for you, right? Um, and also the libraries have a lot of tools, free tools, you know, librarians, you know, they might be busy putting those books away, but they are like willing to help you to figure out, you know, how to log into a certain, you know, website or how to, there's so many free things out there, so be mindful of, you know, keeping it, you know, simple and, and you utilize the free apps that are out there. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have anything unique to add on to what I've said, but I think um, don't be afraid of, you know, like you mentioned something about community garden. There's so many websites where you could say, hey, you know, I really need volunteers. X, Y, and you know, and they'll come out, they get to know you, they go through the process. And each time I had volunteer or volunteers, I would just literally tell them, hey, take whatever you want. Because, you know, um, for instance, like the Swiss chart, I know it's gonna regrow, so I'm not losing anything. I'm like, please clear that out, you know? But help me, in exchange, you take the food. So that's how you build your CSA and your customers uh, and relationship and getting the word out and, you know, so stuff like that. pretty much it you know there's no secret I think it's just you being you and just be authentic and just be real and figure out what is reasonable and you know the the, the biggest challenge I had was the logistics and transportation because we're it's like wow I have all this produce and I hate to waste food so plan out and be wise about like how much a produce do I want to sell what is left for waste because essentially you got to feed the other creatures right and so, you know, where are my target area? Where should I drop off these produce? I met my customers the weirdest places, like, <laughs> like parking lots and my work, they would come in and it's like, what's happening here? And I'm like, oh, this is my side job, selling produce while I'm working. So I, I mean, I meet folks in random places and just give them their produce and move along and, um, but yeah. Is, is there a social media platform that you prefer? I'm an Instagram, like big time Instagram. I think it's just like easy for me to post, move on. It's simple and it's, you know. Facebook, um, yeah, I have a huge audience in Facebook. Um, but Instagram I like. I don't know, it just fits in my age group, I guess. Um, I don't know, but whatever your comfort level is or whatever traffic that you have, just build on that. Yeah. How do you how do you balance your time between your business, it sounds like you have a full time business, a part time business, and then social media and marketing? How do you balance that? Yeah, I mean I think what I did was like first of all when they heard like Somali woman farming, I instantly like someone reached out to me, did a video and it just took off. Right? And then you just have so many people requesting me on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, this is a good time for me to like let this marketing thing do itself. <laughs> so I just went along with it. I was like, all right. And then I got overwhelmed. I said, oh, whoa, this is crazy. Like, I just really want to focus on my skills and like trying to be certified. 
because my goal was to make sure that we are certified three years. Now when I say we, it's my husband, my two boys, all of us, um, that we complete our goal. So then I, I got, you know, re I redirected myself, like, okay, you need to focus. And then when I realized a lot of people were following me and they were maintaining that, even if I didn't post, they're still like sending me messages. I'm like, okay, what do you want? <laughs> you want to post? Okay. So I just kept doing the monthly and that satisfied a lot of folks. And they're like, where do we get your produce? I want to come and help you. I had a lot of volunteers, <laughs> a lot of volunteers. And that's a good tool. Use that, set a, 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 a time and you'll be surprised. People will come out on us. Random people show up at the farm during the weekends with their kids. Put them to work. You know, they're already there. They were not invited. And it's just a good way to monitor them too. You're like, stranger doing here? What are you doing here? You know, especially if you're a woman, you're out there alone. Highly recommend that, you know, you're with other folks. Never had any issues, but like, I'm just saying, like, just utilize those unwanted people that are just there. Like, how did you figure this place out? Like, I was, was curious, but you know, you say, hey, why don't you come and do some weeding for me? In exchange, you could take whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So you try to do, sorry for asking so many questions. No. Um, but do you try to do just like a once a month post or are you posting weekly? Well, now that um, I'm on the next level of my business and I, you know, I got my LLC, I try, so I'm doing a lot of experiment to see the response if, you know, if people would be interested in participating, stuff that I have in mind. And I'm getting a lot of like, you know, yeah, sign me up, me, 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 you know? And I'm like, okay. So now I'm stuck like, I was asking Tabitha about like, I have people that are willing to give me the money, but how do I sell that to them so that they can give me the money to do these programs that I want to do, these awareness. Because it, for me, in my community, I have to do the education piece first and then think about the other stuff. Because once they understand the value of growing your own food then, and how to grow it here in this climate, then you know you could create other things. But for me, it's just the educational piece. So I maintain that, you know. I probably would throw like a few things about my family. So I'll just post a picture, my kids and I just doing random things so that they feel like they have a connection with me. Um, mind you, I don't even know these people. Like I, you know, so when I get random stares and I'm like, oh, Facebook follower. <laughs> Or it's just a stranger. It's 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 so it's such a small world. Like people will learn about you so quickly, and they just want to know. And you know, the the biggest thing I learned is that people want to support small farmers. Let's not dismiss that. Like they want to give you the money. They want you to grow it. There's a huge demand. So please stick to that. And you know, um, it's our passion. It's a business. It's also a practice that I want that to be back, you know. Um, I was joking with Laura one time, I said, Laura, I don't understand um, the front yard in here in America. I said, what's the purpose of that? Like, <laughs> like what is the purpose of that? Can someone, isn't, for me, I'm thinking like, isn't that a space for you to grow your food? Yes. Wasn't it at some point? Yes. I just find it wild that like, you're cutting and you're spraying and stuff and then you're maintaining that. Or you're paying someone else to do that. So for me, it was like, I don't understand. Like, why is that? So, and those are good questions to ask folks. Like, why is that? Why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. Where you sell? you sell farmers Where I was selling um, was uh, Kingfield and Mill City. Really liked Kingfield because I just connected with that audience because they were ready. And you're like, you know what? I grew this for you. I have no idea what it is, <laughs> but try it and let me know what you come up with and then we just exchange recipes. So I really enjoyed Kingfield Market, one of my favorite market. Mm -hmm. Do you have any print promotion materials or do you sell people about your I utilize, see like I'm on a budget, right? Like, which is zero, I don't have money. <laughs> so it's like Facebook, 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 social media, that's all I use. I don't print things. I just, you want to get to know me? Utilize that free resource. Yeah. 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 I, I would say if you have a great photo, great picture, and you can probably sell what you sell on the social media because if you post something very beautiful and you're curious, they just ask about, 
how much do you have and if it would tend to talk to you on bio and things like that. Yeah. I don't have comments about posting stuff on Facebook because you have to be careful about how much you have a library too because mm -hmm. when they like it, they won't have it. Mm -hmm. Next order, sometimes you use a very quick drug. But I don't do too much, but too much I keep other people, but sometimes I will work where you have what is available. Just share the cloud, okay, I will have this stuff available soon. And most of your friends will say, okay, say this much for me, and you mm -hmm. tend to have idea of love. Yeah. You have some customer that I have to do. That's a great, yeah. So before you post, make sure you have the demand, you know? So I, yeah, I think that's a smart way to really do it. And then also like, you know, when you know weeding is coming, just get, the, get those volunteer days out, you know? Um, or say, you know, if you volunteer 30 minutes for me, I'll give you 50% off of the produce. That works, you know? Um, or free or, you know, whatever. Now, free can be sometimes you that might be problematic because they'll bring their other friends to like, hey, put some hours, you know what I mean? I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. But just make sure that there's a consistent with your, you know, how you sell yourself, I guess, essentially. Yeah. 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 And so, what's your page? What are your pages? Oh, I was going to share. <laughs> so, I started off. Oh, so it's my name and then just Naima's farm. So, here we go. Uh, did it log me out? So this was my first post. I loved it. It was 2016. Someone tell me what that is? Oh my goodness, yes. They passed. They're certified. <laughs> yeah, they're great. You can see the hay on the background. Um, so I, I just try to post like just real things, I guess. Um, Stuff like that, and then I'll, I'll say, you know, it's available this day, this time, meet me at that Target parking or whatever, you know, wh wherever I choose folks to come out. Um, uh, and then this is me jamming. Service is not the greatest sometimes out there, but <laughs> you see the Swiss chart and kale, and then. Yeah, that was a good year. The tomatoes are looking good. A lot of weeds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like, and I did it with my phone, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna hire a photographer for $500, are you kidding me? So like, and I'm not tech savvy, you guys, you know? So like, what I was able to accomplish, if you're tech savvy, you could do way better than me, you know? So I, I try to, be creative, make up for my, what do you call it, those um, high school electives, what is it, those photography classes, you know, so I'm like trying to be very um, skillful and try to play with my phone and take multiple pictures and edit and it's time consuming but it's so worth it. Um, I think, yeah, some of them are dark, like I shouldn't be in this picture, you see how, so that was not a good picture. But you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's real. Like when I say be authentic, like this is real. Like look at that, it's a, it's a mess. I was harvesting cabbage that day, you know? And that's the aftermath. So, I don't, food safety, maybe this is not the best method. <laughs> so don't do that. I don't know what the rules are, but, um, but you know, like this was my first sell, my lettuce. Like first harvest of 2016 or, you know, hashtag whatever, you know? And that's how you get a lot of followers, like hashtag. I didn't know what that was until I discovered social media in 2016, so. Do you have specific hashtags that you use for every post? Yeah, so hashtag your business name. So you gotta be consistent with that. Um, and then like hashtag, um, these are my things, like, Things, other things that I'm passionate about too. It's not just the farming. So immigrants, immigration, um, you know, like food justice, like you know, it's because then I'm attracting um, not customers but other folks that potentially want to partner with me or um, potentially want to give me money um, or I just opportunities, you know. So yeah. I went to the Minnesota Farmers Market Association the conference, and they said like at minimum 30 hashtags per post. 
oh gee like nobody has time i don't have time for that but you know if i could get a few or five in that's insane like hey eric I was just thinking about the question earlier that I asked about um, kind of the printed stuff that you have on the skin. I think sometimes just having your apps, like your username, yeah. out there, and then and like a fun hashtag might be something to consider that's like something clever and creative. Um, yeah. Like we were using um, Molly had come up with it uh, for EFC, hashtag EFC there this year. And people like, really picked up on that. That's my little guy. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So you can do it on a site. Not yeah, to yeah, out. Yeah, not one. You know, this is yeah. like, you can if you're thinking about it on a budget. But yeah. you just come up with like a sign yeah. that, you know, that allows people to be able to follow you. Mm -hmm. Or just, you know, do something like that on their own like that. And even I think another step is like, can you have a weird kind of quirky, I don't know, chicken or something like that, like, 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 like Facebook or a picture moment. Yeah. Like, a gimmick that brings people that like, like do a selfie. Let me tell you the biggest thing with um, social media when you're starting up, don't get caught up with the numbers of followers because that will emotionally like mess you up because <laughs> it fluctuates, you know? Some people might get tired and be like, oh, I'm no longer interested in you anymore because you posted something different from what you're doing farming. Like, if you're supportive of X, Y, and Z, and they don't agree with you on that, they'll just say, I'm following. You know what I mean? So your numbers will like change. I notice my numbers changing. You know, so I'm like, whatever, you know, either you like me, who I am, or you don't. I could care less about the number. I just need to get the word out and just maintain the people that I have. And, 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 and occasionally, like quarterly, I would say, thank you everyone for following me. You know what I mean? Just kind of appreciate these people that are actually putting time in you, you know, that it is, someone actually is putting time in you to follow you, to actually like your thing, you know? So for me, it's like, I'll say stuff randomly, like, hey, thanks, you know, I hope everyone is doing well, or I'll put something silly, you know, try to see how they feel about me, and, uh, but, you know, I really don't care about the numbers. I just care about, you know, am I doing something useful? with my time here if i'm getting something in return and if i don't get something in return in three months i the whole rebranding thing that's why i wanted her to tell me like more like how do you do that like because sometimes you might not get any response for some time you're like why are folks silent like what did i say what did i do but you know i think it's just reminding them where you want to go with your business it's a good thing you know um so that's, that's my little guy. He was earning a, like 50 cents an hour or something, which I think was just ridiculous. That was too, too much. <laughs> you know, I was just I'm like, no, I don't want to pay you that much. But yeah, I know it. Does anyone know what, what's going on here? This is not the best picture. Oh, yeah. It's my onion. So like, maybe like have someone else who have a better, like, knows how to do the setting to look at your pictures before you post is helpful too because I don't want to remove this post, but I love it. But it doesn't really say much because it doesn't really say what's going on. It's just, you just see a bunch of onions, right? But there's a purpose behind of what I'm doing. There's actually a technique. There's something happening here. Um, but, but then I should have elaborated a little bit more. So maybe, and this is when I look, you can see like the progress that I make where I just put organic red onions. That's it. I didn't use any hashtag. This is 2016, I believe. Is that, Mayla? Is that Carrie? Yeah, so Carrie the, onions? you know what happened to me? <laughs> I was on the, I was like, I don't know. I just harvest all the onions and I just kept going. I apparently I had a lot of energy. I kept, so then I realized, I was like, oh my God, like I harvested way too much onions. Like, that wasn't part of the plan, so I took it home, and I'm like, okay, wh what should I do? So I cleared the, the, the dining table, and I said, all right, within like a week or two maybe, you know, you got the bolt onions, and it was amazing because I cleaned that thing up and sold it to my family. I didn't take it to the market. Food safety, right? Like, I was like, no, I'm not going to take it to the market because I took it home, and so I just gave it to my family and sold whatever I could to them. And why, why not? They, they like your... 
yeah but like you, you have to practice the actual what you're practicing here in the real world you can't adjust because you you want to maintain that when you establish your own business right so I think everything that you do here maintain that that's so critical because like sometimes that binder that you have right now there's so much information sometimes I'll go back and read you know it's like oh my goodness yeah that's right okay this is how you do things just to keep it in there you know um, because people will ask you tough questions and so you're like oh okay I don't have my binder you, know, you, you, you want to be knowledgeable especially if they're following you um, so yeah I, here's the thing I'm not farming this year I mean I went back to graduate school or I, I was I got accepted last year so I took last semester off so I I'm back in school so I'm trying to finish that but also what I'm trying to do since I established the LLC is do more educational and potentially build uh, some kind of support system that could fund me to get a land so so it never stops you know what I mean either you're going to classes or you're trying to so it never stops don't stop try to figure out 2019 this is what I want to do so that was my plan for 2019 um, but also maintain the skills that you learn here. Every piece is so important. Um, and, and work together too because you know you can learn a lot from a lot of the farmers. So this is another. So what I do is um, I start from the beginning to like the middle and the end. So this is the end, right? I posted this December 27th, but it doesn't look like December 27th. But this is actually like September, mid-September maybe. You can see that I removed the plastic mulch. Like, thanks everyone for supporting me. Um, this is it, you know? Um, so I think it's helpful, like, um, uh, oh yeah, they like this. What do you do with your, I actually eat my produce. <laughs> it's like, I, I do. So I try to show them, you know, few things what I do with my produce um, it's my tomatoes yeah this box I sold it to I think we were at Kingfield market there was I don't know if that restaurant is still there do you know what I'm talking about I don't know the name of it so Molly and I went in there I was like oh Molly I have to get rid of this tomato I came here to make money right she was like let's just walk over to the chef and see what they could do with this tomatoes and you gotta sell it man like I'm telling you I was like, I'm not taking this home. Like, that's a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> They're beautiful. I know someone is going to buy this. Um, so I didn't sell that. So I went to the restaurant. And Molly just like, go, Naima. Do, do what you got to do. And I'm like, oh. She's like, I don't, you know, try to convince a chef midday on a Sunday. The, such a busy restaurant that you need to buy this box of tomatoes. I literally was like, listen, I'm sorry. But could you please help me? Like, I really want you to make something beautiful from this beautiful tomatoes and she actually purchased it. So like, I don't know, it's just, you just gotta learn your, I'm a hustler so I'm like, I can't take this home. Like, I worked so hard, no way I'm not taking this home. Um, so <laughs> I, obviously we gave her a discount because it was after the market. So, and it's okay, you know, um, just get rid of it. This is when we were doing the community uh, this is the Eden Prairie, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with Eden Prairie. They have an airport, so right behind, there's a gas station right by the airport. There's a community garden. It's, it's rocky, but we were doing community garden there for some time. And a lot of your community, um, matter of fact, a lot of the churches are willing to give you space for free to grow food. So don't be shy, like reach out to churches and like, you know, and say, hey, could, could I use your space to grow food? Part I'll give donation to the church members, you know. Um, they're they're really excited about stuff like that. So I didn't like this place because it was rocky and very toxic. <laughs> um, but it was just an experiment just to see what we could do, um, and a space where the boys could run around and actually see the flights, the planes take off and land. Um, so that was a fun place. Uh, not the best place to grow food, but you know. Oh, this is me in the market. Take pictures at the market. Like, before you go to the market, let them know when you're going to be, where, the address. 
you know, uh, what you're gonna sell, you know, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, or even like the day before the, you know, I was harvesting the peppers. So just announcing and say, okay, I'm gonna be at Kingfield next Sunday. Come out and support me. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, there goes Laura and my niece. That was a nice picture. <laughs> yeah. My boys. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what I do with social media. Free. Doesn't cost me anything. <laughs> That's the key, you know, like, it's free. You know, um, but eventually as your business grows, definitely invest in like, you know, those web designers and stuff like that. But, and you know, there's a technique to hustle them. You're like, I'm a first time business owner. I'll do shout out to my social media if you give me 50% off or whatever. They're willing to do that. Even your business cards. I went to this um, UPS. There's a couple that owns this UPS. So I ex explained to them what I was doing and they were like, okay, we'll give it to you for free if you reorder. And I said, oh, really? Okay. And then I, I did that. So why not? You know? So I think, you know, sharing your story again, your passion, people are like very generous to help you the first time, especially if they know this is a startup. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I've been there, you know? Especially reaching out to another, I hate to send you to a small business owner for help, but they're the most supportive and generous folks because they understand they they relate to you know what, what you're going through and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I was accepted to the graduate program for school counseling in um, River Falls, Wisconsin, um, and so I'm doing that. Um, but honestly, like I struggle with because I wanted to do agriculture, but I don't know. I'm still like going back and forth like do I drop this and do something else and do what I actually really want uh, which is agriculture but I'm too old to be in school I feel like I'm done with school the paper and, and this younger generation I, I get anxiety relying on my paper group projects you know it's like you're so busy with social media I don't know if I trust you <laughs> with my group project so I just feel like I, I'm aging out <laughs> from school you know, never too old to, to learn, but like, I did my part, I like, but I, I, school counseling is what I've been doing for the past 10 years. I'm a truancy and education neglect uh, program supervisor for uh, contract work for the county, Hennepin County. So I do that daytime. Yep. So I love working with the youth, but I think my passion is to educate them through farming. And I've been doing that a lot. Matter of fact, um, a lot of the schools, um, for instance, like I have a really close relationship with Eden Prairie because when I first came here, I went to Eden Prairie High School. But I ended up graduating in Minnetonka, but um, they invite me to their career table each year. And that's when I talk about the farming and like trying to help kids understand like you can do your passion and you can do your career, get your college degree, but also go after your career, you know? And so here and there, I'll just post a few things that, you know, they're cute little cards that they write. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, thank you.
talk about, I saw that post that you did, was it you? Um, I really liked it. Um, you know, the, the entrance to the park, that long, like, you know, um, the winter time, that was beautiful. Yeah. Eric, you're way advanced than me. Like I cut people. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know how to like adjust that. That's so irritating. Me. So that's yeah. Like like even like posts of like stuff that I have so many great pictures of, but like the angle. Maybe when I can learn something from each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think people want like, their big photos. They don't, they're so tired of the Photoshop. And I like that too. Like I have the real deal, the real deal. Like I'm tired of it. Yeah, I am actually doing. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm meeting with, uh, I told this Laura, and I don't even know how this happened. Uh, I never reached out to him uh, as a commissioner. 